Hey, I'm Shuram, I'm a Teardown Tech at iFixit. And I'm Arthur, and I'm the Tech Writer Team Lead. We're at the CEO's house, we're gonna blow up some batteries and hopefully not burn his house down. Hmm. Well, it'll get better from here. Every day we walk around with little combustible rectangles in our back pockets. But how combustible are they really? The batteries in our electronics tend to grab headlines when they go awry, but the truth is those are extreme edge cases. With proper preventative measures, lithium ion batteries can be safe to handle. When starting any electronics repair, it's important to disconnect the battery first and reconnect it last to avoid short circuits that can damage your device. But did you know that that same battery can still be dangerous if it was fully charged, even after you've disconnected it? This is why the first step of many iFixit repair guides is to discharge the battery. Sometimes people skip this step, here's why that's a terrible idea. To demonstrate the risk, we're taking a wide selection of batteries and subjecting them to accidental damage. We're doing this to show you how you can avoid a dangerous situation, so it goes without saying, don't do this at home. So here we've got the 12 Pro Max battery. It's a 25% charge, and we're gonna stab it. Hmm. And it does nothing. Using a plastic spudger decreases the chances of accidentally puncturing the battery. And even with a puncture, there's less chance for sparks to start flying since the plastic is not conductive. Let's try with a metal implement. Go for it. Ah, ah. got some smoke. Okay, a little bit of sparks. Some more smoke and sparks. So you get some smokes and sparks, but it's not gonna light on fire. The infrared camera confirms that the battery is heating up, but it doesn't contain enough energy to cause thermal runaway because it only had 25% charge to begin with. Hold up a sec, what the heck is thermal runaway? Arthur? Lithium ion battery is like a tightly packed fruit roll where the insulating liner is coated with super thin metals and chemical slurries, or in this case, period fruit. The battery's pouch is then filled with a gel-like electrolyte, which gives the lithium ion something to travel in. The insulating layer is very important as it prevents the positive and negative layers from touching each other and creating a short circuit. If you stab a battery, you may electrically connect those layers and that makes a short circuit. All the energy stored in the battery will immediately try to flow through this short, creating lots of heat. And if the reaction gets hot enough, the electrolyte starts to decompose into flammable vapors. When the superheated vapors encounter air, they spontaneously combust. This creates more heat which vaporizes more flammable electrolyte and creates a self-sustaining fire, also known as a thermal runaway. You can see this happen when we puncture this fully charged iPhone 12 Pro Max battery. Remember, these were identical batteries. The only difference between them was the state of charge. And you can bet there's no fixing this phone after an accident like that. All of this can be mitigated if the localized short circuit never gets hot enough to ignite the electrolyte. You could think of it like stabbing a can of Coke with a screwdriver. You don't want to do it when it's full and all shaken up. Rather, pop the top and drink most of it before you stab it. Draining the battery reduces its stored energy, so there's less current flowing through the short circuit, resulting in less heat and no fire. And when it comes to batteries, size really does matter. Let's see what happens when we puncture a 97 watt hour laptop battery. This thing is about seven times bigger than the 12 Pro Max battery. For most folks, this is the biggest battery you're gonna encounter during a repair, a fully charged laptop battery. Bigger battery, more electrolytes, bigger reaction. And that reaction occurs across multiple cells. So in real life, you could potentially be looking at a fire that spreads across the battery over time. This shows why glued in batteries are such a poor design choice. Aside from the hassle of discharging a battery before starting a repair, it also poses a serious risk to recyclers. These fires can and do cost lives and cause untold amounts of environmental and property damage. Of course, a lot of manufacturers don't want replaceable batteries. They'll tell you that these things are just too dangerous for the average consumer to repair. We've just proven that that's nonsense. Just discharge your battery before you start your repair and you'll be fine. If you're fixing something with a larger battery, partially discharging that battery may still leave it with enough energy to combust if you have an accident. For cases such as that, discharge that battery to 0%. The battery won't be damaged if it's at 0% for just a short period of time. Also, not all swollen batteries catch fire or explode. The risk of combustion comes from how charged the battery is, not how swollen. 
So if you ever notice your battery swelling or if it smells funny, don't freak out. Stop using the device. Don't charge the battery. Replace it right away. Definitely don't put it in your pocket. Swollen batteries can happen due to small manufacturing defects, even if the device has never been opened. All right, with the serious stuff out the way, let's take this to its logical conclusion. Big batteries with nail guns. All right, now this battery is 100 times bigger than your average phone battery. You won't run into something like this, but we're gonna see if we can blow one up. There you have it. Lithium ion batteries can be made safe to handle. Just remember, discharge that battery to below 25% before you start your repair. Uh. Oh, we oh, got something. Ignition. Well, at least one of the cells had some energy.